Suzuki Ignis Review. Our rating. 4 Star. The funky new Suzuki Ignis stands out in the city car class with its crossover style. 4. Great value, stylish, more spacious than you'd expect. Against. Unsettled ride, noisy engine, hard plastics in the cabin. The Suzuki Ignis is a real breath of fresh air in the city car class, offering desirable crossover style looks and a distinctive character that sets it apart from rivals. Love or hate the exterior, you have to accept that there's little else at this price with so much personality. The Ignis also sticks to Suzuki's usual traits of offering tons of equipment for not an awful lot of money, and despite the dinky dimensions it's actually very versatile and spacious. It's light and feels agile and nippy around town, but the market's best small cars are both more comfortable and more composed to drive. The Ignis does lack the class of city cars like the Skoda Citigo inside, with some cheap trim but when you think how much you're paying, it's entirely forgivable. Four-wheel drive, and a super frugal hybrid variant, means there are plenty of strings to this little Suzuki's bow. Our choice. Suzuki Ignis 1.2 Dual Jet SCT, Non-Hybrid Suzuki decided to revive a name from its recent history in 2016, joining a sparsely populated niche as it did so. The first Suzuki Ignis was a forgettable high-riding Super Mini, axed way back in 2007. However, this new Ignis is totally unrecognizable from that, shrinking in size and offering a desirable crossover style design. The Japanese brand will tell you that it has invented a new model segment with the 2016 Ignis, but that's not entirely true as rivals such as the Fiat Panda 4x4 offer similar mini SUV styling and all-wheel drive traction. Still, the funky styling and distinctive shape of this city car crossover are enough to ensure it looks unlike much else on the road. Few car companies are as experienced at building small cars as Suzuki, hence the confidence it's showing in treading this unusual path. The new Suzuki Ignis starts from under £10,000, meaning it's priced slightly higher than Suzuki's other city car offering, the Celerio. The Ignis is pitched as the emotional offering in the sector, while the cheaper, more sensible Celerio is said to be the rational choice. Still, the Ignis is priced at a similar level to conventional city cars such as the Skoda Citigo and Ford Ka Plus. Buyers can choose from just two engine variants in the Ignis, and they both produce the same power figure. It's Suzuki's 1.2-liter dual-jet four-cylinder petrol engine, available in either conventional form or as a frugal SHVS hybrid. Unusually for a city car, you can also specify a proper four-wheel drive system. There are three trim levels on offer in the Suzuki Ignis range, and all are very well equipped. Entry-level SZ3 trim comes with six airbags, aircon, a DAB radio with Bluetooth, front electric mirrors and 15-inch alloy wheels. Step up to SZT for SAT NAV, a rear-view camera, 16-inch alloys, roof rails and sliding rear seats, while flagship SZ5 trim has climate control, autonomous braking, keyless entry, rear electric windows, LED headlights, and front fog lamps. Engines, Performance, and Drive 3.4 Star Keep the Ignis in town and it's nippy and agile, but it starts to struggle on the open road. The Suzuki Ignis might pretend to be a shrunken SUV, but it's actually one of the lightest cars you can buy in Britain. The platform underneath is shared with the larger Balano, which is hardly portly as it is, yet the smaller size means the Ignis has a tiny curb weight. Base models weigh in at just 810 kilograms, which is lighter than a two-seat Smart Fortwo. The Ignis feels agile and nimble as a result of that low weight and short wheelbase, meaning it certainly feels a world away from most heavy crossovers. It's a delight to drive around town, with a small size, upright driving position and excellent visibility making it perfect for threading through tight gaps. However, it lacks the sophistication of rivals once you head out onto the open road, with slow and vague steering reducing the fun factor when speeds increase. Body roll is noticeable despite an initially keen feel, 
while a number of conventional city cars tackle bends with more composure. The ride is also a bugbear. The Ignis is softly sprung, taking the edge off speed humps, but it gets caught out easily by sharp bumps, which thud and crash through the cabin. Road noise is quite pronounced, too, while noticeable wind and engine noise mean it isn't the best city car for long journeys. Interestingly, the lighter non-hybrid models are a touch smoother in terms of ride quality. Engines Your engine choice is limited if you want an Ignis. To keep costs down, Suzuki offers just an 89 bhp 1.2 liter 4 cylinder dual jet petrol engine, with the option of an innovative 48V mild hybrid system for economy minded buyers. The standard 1.2 is hardly inefficient, thanks to the small weight it has to pull along. Around town there's plenty of poke to get you about, with a slick gear shift letting you keep it on the boil. 120nm of torque isn't an awful lot, however, so on motorways and uphills you'll need to rev it hard just to keep up with traffic. It's noisy when you do so, too. Suzuki claims a 0 to 62 miles per hour time that's around 2 seconds faster for the SHVS hybrid model. The Ignis's 48 volt system uses a simple belt driven integrated starter generator, which also acts as a starter motor, providing electrical assistance during acceleration. A small battery pack stores the energy from the regenerative brakes. It's a setup that's cheaper, lighter, and simpler than a full hybrid, doing without the heavy batteries and electric motor. The Ignis SHVS is a bit punchier from the get-go, but when the assistance tails off you're left with the same need for revs. It's not enough of a boost for us to recommend it over the standard car, particularly as you have to opt for the top-spec SZ5 trim to have it. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 4.3 star. The Ignis should be very cheap to buy and run regardless of spec, although insurance groups aren't all that low. The Ignis shares the familiar Suzuki family trait of being really good value for money. And even looking past the attractive list prices, it should prove cheap to run. Even the non-hybrid 1.2-liter engine manages a claimed combined figure of 61.4 mpg and emits 104g slash km of CO2, which is impressive for a non-turbo unit and means it's very cheap to tax. Better still, we found it easy to exceed 5.0 mpg in normal driving, so that figure seems realistic. The hybrid manages a slightly better claimed 65.7 mpg combined economy and emits 97 g slash km of CO2, though if you spec it with four-wheel drive those numbers creep out to 60.1 mpg and 106 g slash km. It means the first year of road tax is free on all Ignis models, while the maximum you'll pay in year two is 20 pounds. All of those figures are amongst the best in the city car class, while the 4x4 version is considerably more frugal than the Fiat Panda Cross with a petrol engine. The only drawback is the small 32-liter fuel tank. Repair bills for the Ignis are likely to be roughly in line with the rest of the Suzuki range and not very expensive. Insurance Groups For a small, low-cost city car, the Ignis isn't all that cheap to insure. One factor to blame on that is the 3-star Euro NCAP safety rating, rising to 4 stars on top spec models. All Ignis models, regardless of spec, are fixed at Group 90. For comparison, a VW UP starts at Group 2E, and a Fiat Panda kicks off from Group 4U. Depreciation Residual values for the Ignis are decent but not outstanding for the class. Base versions of the Suzuki are predicted to retain around 42% of their value after 3 years, yet top spec models see that drop to 35%. Still, it's a cheap car in the first place so that's not too difficult to swallow. Interior, Design, and Technology 3.8 Star Loads of kit and stylish design inside and out, yet cabin feels a bit cheap. Key to the new Suzuki Ignis appeal is its styling. Unlike the boxy old Ignis, today's model brings a fresh and distinctive approach to small car design, ushering in a crossover style look that stands out next to rivals. From the front, 
The Ignis looks narrow and has a bold bumper and grille design, surrounded by a chrome strip and with U-shaped LED running lights on higher spec models. Side on, you start to see the crossover influences in the stretched wheel arches and body cladding although, interestingly, you need to choose SZT models and above to receive those and roof rails. Several different colors for the roof can also be selected. The rear is where the retro influences lie, with a steeply raked window line and slits in the C-pillar designed to hark back to Suzuki's Whisked City car of the 1970s. It's easy to see why Suzuki positions this as the emotional offering compared to the dull-looking Celerio. The inside is far more conventional, but still more stylish than many city car interiors. The two-tone effect for the upper and lower dash brightens things up, as does the body-colored door pulls and center console plastic. The central screen juts out from the top of the dash, yet the graphics are dated and that lets things down a bit. Another problem is the materials used. You can tell where Suzuki has made weight savings, particularly with the tinny feeling doors, but this is forgivable given the price and curb weight. All of the cabin plastics are hard and scratchy, and the seats aren't very supportive a number of rivals feel more grown up inside. It's all solidly put together, though, and mostly feels built to last. There's no arguing with the sheer amount of kit on offer. Base models are slightly more expensive than other entry-level city cars, yet few offer the same level of equipment as the Ignis for under £10,000. Top spec models are even better value, offering an almost executive car level of kit. SAT NAV, Stereo and Infotainment The first UK example of the Ignis came with a fiddly aftermarket Pioneer infotainment system, but Suzuki's bosses ensure us that customer models will come with the same 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system as the Balano. It's feature-packed, with a DAB radio on all models and SAT NAV on mid-spec trims and above. There's also Bluetooth connectivity, USB, and auxiliary ports, although there's no CD player. Unfortunately, it's not the easiest screen to use. It often takes a couple of prods to respond to your inputs, while the graphics are low-res and a bit cheap-looking. The volume slider on the side of the screen isn't very user-friendly either. Practicality, comfort, and boot space. 4.5 star. Ignis is far more practical than you'd expect looking at it. The sliding rear seats are a real boon. Take one look at the tiny dimensions of the Ignis and you'd be forgiven for assuming it's not very practical. But you'd be wrong. Suzuki has done a great job of squeezing the maximum amount of space available from the slim bodywork. The key thing that helps to make the most of the Ignis space is the sliding rear bench seat, standard on SZT models and above. It can be moved forward and aft up to 165 mm to allow buyers to choose between rear legroom and boot capacity. The seat backs recline, too, while storage is decent, taking the form of big door bins, two central cup holders and a split glove box. Visibility from the driver's seat of the Ignis is very good, mainly thanks to the high up driving position. It's a characteristic taken from larger crossovers that will please city dwellers, and makes the Ignis very easy to thread between traffic. Size The Ignis is 3.7 m long and 1.6 m wide, making it a fair bit longer and slightly wider than both the Celerio and rival city cars like the Skoda Citigo. It's surprising given the Ignis is meant to be less practical than the Celerio but it translates into a good amount of space for occupants. Legroom, headroom, and passenger space. We've yet to try an Ignis without the sliding rear seat bench but with it fitted, four average-sized adults will find a surprising amount of legroom and even decent headroom impressive given the car's sloping roofline. The two-position reclining backrest also makes things more comfortable. Obviously, if you slide the seats forward to prioritize boot space legroom is reduced, while the Ignis slim width means there's little hope of carrying three passengers in the back. Still, the same can be said for other city cars. Boot The Ignis's boot space for models without the sliding rear seat is a sizable 267 liters. By comparison, 
a Skoda Citigo offers 251 liters, while the Renault Twingo's 219 liters is a long way down on the Suzuki. It's worth remembering that the capacity changes to 204 liters if you opt for the four-wheel drive model. You can fold the back seats to increase that space to 1,100 liters, which is also a very good size for the class. Reliability and Safety 3.7 Star Suzuki has a good reputation for reliability, although the base model Ignis 3-star Euro NCAP safety rating lets it down. Suzuki finished 19th in our 2016 driver power survey, which is a big improvement on the year before. Reliability scores are strong, too, with the brand finishing in 7th place in that category. It's too early to judge the Ignis for overall dependability, but the early signs are good. It helps that the little Suzuki is relatively simple mechanically. Even the hybrid is far less complex than other petrol-electric models on sale. The same can't be said for the electrical systems, though, as top-spec models in particular come loaded with kit. Entry-level Ignis models suffer at the hands of Euro NCAP stringent new testing regime. It scores three stars, mostly because it lacks standard safety equipment and driver assist systems. SCT models and above see that increase to 4 stars as a suite of driver aids is thrown in. All Ignis models get front, side, and curtain airbags as standard, however, and Euro NCAP's ratings for adult and child occupant protection are good. Warranty As with every Suzuki, the Ignis comes with a 3-year, 60,000-mile warranty. That's in line with most of the industry, although brands like Hyundai and Kia are now offering 5- or 7-year warranties. Suzuki's strong reliability record means you shouldn't spend too much time back at the dealer with problems. Servicing The Ignis requires servicing every 9,300 miles or 12 months, whichever comes sooner. A main service is needed every 18,000 miles. Those intervals are about average for a car of this size, but not exceptional. Thankfully, Suzuki's labor and parts rates are pretty low, so it's not a big expense each time.